In the mid-2000s, Jessica Biel was one of the hottest stars in Hollywood, but lately she hasn't been popping up on screens as much. So where has she been? From producing podcasts to working with charities, the Seventh Heaven star has been very busy off-camera. Jessica Biel first captured the hearts of American TV audiences when she starred as Mary in the family drama Seventh Heaven, starting at age 14. Although that series lasted 11 seasons from 1996 to 2006, she didn't stay for the entire run. Beale was famously written off during the fifth season after she started rebelling against the show's rules by cutting her hair and then appearing topless in Gear magazine. By the mid-2000s, however, her career started taking off in a big way. She was soon starring in high-profile movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Rules of Attraction, and I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. At the height of her popularity in 2005, she was named Esquire's Sexiest Woman Alive. But in recent years, it's been widely reported that Hollywood won't cast Beale anymore. Even in her heyday, she was considered something of a lightweight, playing love interests and scream queens without much substance. By the 2010s, however, Beale started appearing in smaller films, which really allowed her to show off her acting chops. She played a single mom in The Truth About Emmanuel, a Sundance Film Festival entry in 2013. In 2015, she played a yoga instructor who finds herself having to protect her long-lost sister from her pimp boyfriend in Bleeding Heart, which was shown at the Tribeca Film Festival. Then she moved on to projects such as A Kind of Murder and 2016's The Book of Love. They haven't all been big projects with box office appeal, but they've helped Beale grow as an actor. She told Marie Claire in 2017, they were great learning experiences. Beale and pop star Justin Timberlake started dating in 2007 and tied the knot in 2012. In 2022, the couple renewed their vows to mark their 10th wedding anniversary. The ceremony took place in Italy. On Instagram, Timberlake took a walk down memory lane by posting photos and videos of him and Beale over the course of their relationship. He wrote in the caption, 10 years ain't enough. You make me a better husband and father every day. I love you so much, you beautiful human. Run it back. You just have to keep making time for each other and you have to keep making each other a priority and do the things that you love together. The pair have also been supportive of each other's creative endeavors, even making cameos in one another's projects. Beale can even be spotted dancing with Timberlake during the last half of his music video for 2018's Man of the Woods. Meanwhile, Timberlake made an appearance in Candy, playing an investigator in two episodes. Beale shared photos on Instagram of her and Timberlake preparing to film the series with the caption, Watch out, Candy, there's a new sheriff in town. Beale and Timberlake became parents in April 2015 when Silas Randall Timberlake was born. They welcomed their second child, Phineas, in 2020. Beale said on the Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard podcast that keeping her second pregnancy a secret had been an accident. She revealed, I had, like, a secret COVID baby. It wasn't like it was supposed to be a secret. It was just COVID happened, and then I went to Montana with my family and never left. Beale also noted that Timberlake was allowed to be in the hospital with her during the birth due to changing hospital restrictions. Beale has her own approach to celebrating the holidays with her children, telling People Magazine that she tries to slow things down for them. She said, I find that Christmas is kind of overwhelming for kids. It's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of eyeballs on them, and they've got a lot of stuff to do, so I like to slow roll it. Sure, open one thing. We don't have to open anything else until tonight, and that sometimes happens for us. She added that their holiday destination is pretty much different every year. As Beale continues to grow her titles in the entertainment industry amid other business ventures, she also makes time to advocate for the environment while pursuing other philanthropic endeavors. In January 2010, she joined a group of celebrities as they climbed Mount Kilimanjaro for the Summit on the Summit. That was so hard. The goal of the climb was to bring attention to global water shortages, particularly those in Ethiopia, and raise money for charities supporting clean water infrastructure. The group visited a refugee camp in Ethiopia, seeing firsthand how the shortage has affected people who have been forcibly displaced. Beale told the UN Refugee Agency, I'm really taken by the resilience of the Somali refugees. I want to ensure that all those kids I met in the camp school continue to get clean water. In 2012, Beale was recognized for her charity work, receiving an award at the Variety Power of Women Luncheon. She's also one of the many big names who participated in the 2023 Stand Up to Cancer special. Back in mid-2016, Jessica Beale and some investors put together a restaurant concept designed to appeal to busy upper-class moms in Los Angeles. Au Fudge was part eatery, part nursery. The restaurant had dedicated au pairs available by the hour for younger children so that parents were free to have a meal out. It seemed like a great idea, until the reviews started coming in. Some Yelpers said that the kids' area was dirty and unmaintained, and the food was overpriced and mediocre. In a January 2017 interview with Jimmy Kimmel, the actor said that the business was doing well, but went on to add, I mean, Honestly, the restaurant business is way harder than being a producer. Huh. We're not making money. As it turns out, making no money is not a sustainable business model. By 2018, the restaurant had closed. In a July 15th Instagram post, O Fudge stated, Today is our last day of regular business hours at O Fudge the restaurant. Thanks for all the support. 
increasing conversations surrounding women's reproductive health. That's the goal of the video series If You Don't Tell Them Then Who Will, launched by Beale and Sandra Pelletier, founding CEO of Women Care Global. Beale told Good Morning America that she didn't know about all the changes that her body would undergo during pregnancy, and recalled receiving little information about women's health while attending middle school health class. We don't want women's reproductive health issues to be hidden under stigma or taboos anymore. In an interview with Glamour, Beale said she started thinking about a lot of questions when she stopped birth control two years before giving birth to her first child. She told the outlet, I've been on the pill for so long, how hard will it be to get pregnant? Suddenly, I realized I really didn't know what's going on inside my body. It was shocking. Beale started gaining producing credits with 2008's Hole in the Paper Sky, a short film about the friendship between a math genius and a dog. This project would plant the seed for Iron Ocean Productions, a production company built by Beale and Michelle Purple, whose husband directed Hole in the Paper Sky. Beale told the Washington Post that Purple encouraged her to try her hand at other parts of the filmmaking process while working on that project. She said, I did a lot of things behind the camera. I pushed a dolly. I did craft service. Beale and Purple first worked together on the set of 2005's Stealth, which Purple produced and Beale starred in. They started producing projects under Iron Ocean in the mid-2000s, bringing projects like The Book of Love and the TV series The Sinner to life. In February 2022, the company renewed its first look deal with Paramount Television Studios, which was originally signed in 2019. Beale has been bringing 1990s and 2000s nostalgia to the small screen with the popular anthology series Cruel Summer, which adds another executive producer credit to her long list of projects. Season 1 begins in 1993 with the disappearance of Kate Wallace, who was later rescued. Fellow teenager Jeanette Turner then finds herself in the middle of the case as Kate accuses her of witnessing her abduction and not reporting it. Season 2 takes place in 1999 and 2000, following the friendship between Isabella LaRue and Megan Landry, which begins to crumble following the murder of mutual crush Luke Chambers. The 1990s and 2000s were big decades for Beale's career, and she told The Hollywood Reporter that working on this series brought back memories of her youth. She said, it brought me back to being a young woman in Hollywood and a young woman trying to work through this business and the world at this time when technology was changing so much. Fashion and music and everything. I think at the time, we didn't realize how cool it was. Sadie Stanley, who plays Megan Landry in Cruel Summer, called Beale a Y2K icon. Seeing that it was going to be set in Y2K, I was like, bet, perfect, amazing, can't wait. She went on to add that Beale's work is giving young women the opportunity to play complex characters. Beale continues to make an impression on the small screen, appearing on popular streaming services and high-profile series. In 2016, she started playing an animated version of herself on Netflix's BoJack Horseman. In 2022, Beale played Candy Montgomery in the Hulu miniseries Candy, based on the true story of Montgomery, who was accused of killing her friend in the 1980s. The series premiered almost a full year before the Max series Love and Death, starring Elizabeth Olsen as Montgomery. Olsen told the Wall Street Journal that she and Beale bonded over their shows, saying, it actually was something that connected us. I was terrified at first of having the same show seemingly come out around the same time, and she really made that feel like not such a big deal. In an interview with the Variety Awards Circuit podcast, Beale spoke about her approach to Montgomery, saying, I wanted to create this person that you really, really were conflicted about. You connect on a human level in some way. You're still kind of with her at the end. That's what I hope to create. You just have to have empathy. I didn't play this character like she was the villain. Beale is using social media to show the world her personal adventures, turning herself into a celebrity to watch on platforms like Instagram. The actor recently made headlines with a Pilates workout that featured an appearance by Timberlake. The workout clip posted in August 2023 begins with the actor doing floor exercises before Timberlake's foot appears on camera, gently testing out her abs of steel. She's also shared behind-the-scenes moments from some of her biggest projects, posted photos of her and her husband dressed up for Halloween, and shared plenty of big-life moments, including anniversaries, birthday messages, and Father's Day tributes. She's also using social media to throw back to some of her most well-known roles, including photos and videos of her playing Mary Camden on 7th Heaven. That included a clip that she shared in June 2023 of Mary talking to her sister Lucy and her mom Annie. Beale included the caption, Being 16 is hard. Being 16 with the same haircut as your mom and your sister is really hard. Beale's influence on social media goes way beyond Instagram. In 2019, she starred in Limetown. The Facebook Watch original series tells the story of public radio journalist Leah Haddock, who finds herself on a mission to find out what happened to more than 300 people who disappeared in Tennessee. The show is based on the 2015 podcast of the same name. Beale served as an executive producer on the series. The events chronicled by the podcast are pure fiction, a fact that surprised the actor. She told Variety, I just thought I missed it because our world is so insane that anything is possible really, right? It was definitely a swift learning curve of, okay, this is not real, but it's so fascinating. 
Zach Akers and Skip Bronke, who co-created the Limetown podcast, told The Hollywood Reporter that the show's core team dedicated two weeks to developing the character of Leah with Beale and the producers. Bronke said, The insights that Jess brought to the table made Leah so much more real and grounded and interesting. Yeah. And we went through every line of every script, all 10 episodes, and just, you know, created Leah. Akers added that the way Leah's story is experienced and how her character is portrayed are the biggest differences between the podcast and the TV series. Despite the podcast's success, the TV series was canceled by Facebook Watch in 2020 as the social media giant worked to scale back its scripted series offerings. Since Limetown, Beale has dived into the world of podcasts herself, executive producing The Lost Olympians. The podcast tells the story of swimmer Leslie Cairns, who was making a name for herself in the sport at just 12 years old in 1971, but her hopes of competing in the Olympics were dashed due to restrictions for those classified as colored under the apartheid regime. The four-part series was made exclusively for Audible and was a collaboration between Iron Ocean Productions and Attention, a creative media company. In a December 2021 update released by Attention, Beale said, We are excited to continue creating female-driven content and to launch Iron Ocean into the podcast world with this incredible story. The series was released in full on July 27, 2023, and features Leslie Cairns Falk as well as her brother Patrick Cairns, who also has an athletic background competing in track and field. In 2017, Beale played Cora Tanetti in season one of The Sinner on the USA Network. Based on the novel written by Petra Hamzafar, the series follows Detective Harry Ambrose as he investigates murders while taking a deeper look at the suspects. The first season focuses on Cora, who kills a man at the beach, not knowing why she did it. While Beale only appears on camera during season one, she served as an executive producer on all four seasons of the show. She received a Primetime Emmy nomination and a Golden Globe nomination for her performance. During an Emmys event, Beale said she prepared for the role by researching PTSD and doing subconscious dream work. She and Michelle Purple's Iron Ocean Productions were behind the series, and Purple told the Washington Post that this project was a big moment for them. She said to the newspaper, The Sinner was the game-changing moment for us in the sense of people looked at us different. The industry took us a little bit more seriously. As for why Beale only appears in season one, she told the Mirror that they wanted to further explore Korra, but just couldn't fit it into the anthology series' second outing. Season one was 2017's top new cable series, but the series was canceled after four seasons. The cancellation came as the USA Network started to step away from scripted series, but creator and executive producer Derek Simons noted that they had always planned for just four seasons. In 2019, Beale made headlines for something not related to her work or her relationship status, her stance on vaccines. She posted to Instagram an image of herself in front of California's Capitol building and stated that she went to testify about proposed bill SB 276, which is designed to tighten the process for receiving medical exemptions for vaccinations. The idea of the bill was to reduce fraudulent exemptions through strengthening oversight. However, Beale said in the Instagram post that while she supports children getting vaccinations, her friends had a child with a medical condition that warrants an exemption to the rule. She wrote in the post, That's why I spoke to legislators and argued against this bill. Not because I don't believe in vaccinations, but because I believe in giving doctors and the families they treat the ability to decide what's best for their patients and the ability to provide that treatment. What you have to do for your kid, it's an amazing responsibility and the, the biggest joy. As part of her stance, she allowed herself to be photographed with anti-vaccination activist Robert F. Kennedy Jr., which raised many eyebrows. However, her foray into politics did not yield the results she wished, as Governor Gavin Newsom signed the bill into law a few months later. While Beale continues to act and run her own production company, she is also working to grow another business with families in mind. Kinder Farms was co-founded by Beale and entrepreneur Jeremy Adams. The business focuses on offering over-the-counter wellness products that contain plant-based ingredients. Items include electrolyte drinks, plant-based protein drinks, and various medicines, including those that target congestion and fever. Beale and Adams told Forbes that the idea stemmed from reading the ingredient labels on the medications they were giving to their children. Beale told the outlet, I couldn't read any of these ingredients. I couldn't even pronounce them. The actor then added that her company is meant to give families another option. We're going to take unnecessary artificial ingredients out of children's medicine with the release of the Kinder Med line in 2022. She told Forbes, even if it only has five to seven ingredients I can read that makes sense to me would be helpful. Basically, we're just two parents looking for a solution in the middle of the night, terrified, trying to make the best decision we possibly can for our family. The company has experienced rapid growth. According to PR Newswire, Kinder Farms is number 45 on the 2023 Incorporated 5000 list, which recognizes fast-growing private companies in America.